Hello and welcome back to challenge number 18 of the Ultrix Weekly Challenges. My name is Nick Bignall and this is where I take you through the challenges one by one. And this is well, my 18th challenge. Actually it's my 19th. I did 19 before 18, but that's another story. Uh, this is because this one was slightly difficult and I, just, I, got, I was trying different things and I, I got a bit stuck. So actually this is my kind of second, actually third attempt at this. Anyway, what I realised is that I, I was trying to work out how to do predictive analytics. I'd not really done predictive analytics before. And actually what I've discovered is that I'm using the beta and I'm using the predictive uh, assisted modeling beta for that matter. So um, I thought, well, I don't know if it's cheating to use that. Um, maybe. I don't know. You've got to use all tricks and this is all tricks. So anyway, let me show you what I think how it should work. Anyway, I'm going to run through it. I, I, I didn't. My previous attempts went a bit awry, but I think I've got I think I've got it sus now okay so we look at this particular challenge we have a uh, baseball season has been completed and it's time to uh, to project next year's wins okay so the objective is to determine the top 10 variables that compare correlate to wins excluding win underscore point position percentage pct uh, and games uh, from the correlation Leverage those top 10 variables to predict the number of wins the team will have in next year's season. We then need to isolate the teams to just Boston, LA, of Anaheim. I'm guessing that's uh, the local team for Eltrix. That's where their head, um, headquarters in LA. Um, uh, Chicago Clubs, Cub, Chicago Cubs even, uh, San Francisco Giants, who I had seen and I even saw Dave. Barry, Barry Bond hit a home run a long, long time ago. And uh, Colorado and Texas Rangers. Create the final standing will be how many games out of first, out of first place each team is assuming each team plays 162 games. Okay. So if we look in here, we've got a table with team listed down here in the abbreviations and then number of games they played wins and then this wins percent uh, and then a load of other stats and as i don't know anything about baseball i have no idea what any of them mean but we can we can use their values i think uh, and what we've got to get at the end is a simple six uh, six row table which has the wins for each team, I guess the losses if they haven't, if they've got to get to 162, and then how many back from the top. Okay, so let's let's have a look at the at this. So first of all, that this new tab here called machine learning and assisted modeling. So we'll bring that in, um, and we'll bring in the data straight into oops, if I can add it straight into there. Okay, so we want assisted. We need to run your workflow before starting. So let's run that. Okay, so we now have a big button that says start assisted modeling. So let's hit that. And we get a table. So it gives us a uh select which target you you want and some into it so let's start building it out so the target we want to select is wins okay so that's what we want to try and predict um and we want regression is when you want to predict a numeric outcome where the predicted outcome could be any value so we want to predict the number of wins so that sounds like a good way uh we select target uh, is to be wins question marks yes we do want it to be wins and then we've got it basically looks at all the data and looks at what it is so we've got numeric numeric numeric, numeric as, we, as we know right so um, it then looks at see if we've got any missing data this data has no missing data that's good okay and then we go 
to the next one now. This is where it goes through each of the things and it says all of this stuff is too highly highly too highly associated with target. This stuff is highly associated and this uh, this feature is a good predictor. So uh, obviously we can take out this wind percentage it's held us at the beginning and to take that out and then we can uh, we can either leave the lot or let's just leave the green ones because that equals 10. That equals 10. Okay, so we do next. And then this is the different types of models so linear regression, decision trees, and random forests. So we can run those three. And now it's running through each of those three. And I guess we just wait for it to run through this cycle. Okay, so we've got all three. Now there's no data available, or no, uh, whatever these things, I'm not actually sure what they are. Um, but we can, this one's got a little star on it, it looks, I'm guessing that, or a little medal or something. So let's pick linear regression. Um, I'm assuming that's the one. And you can click down here to add the model to your workflow. So we now have the model in our workflow, we just may give ourselves a bit of room. We can then um, basically bring our data set in, but we obviously need to remove, do some data prep, so we want to remove the um, the win field, so we just don't need that anymore. So if we remove the win, win field, and it was also say, uh, exclude, well, we, I don't suppose it really matters, but excluding the games and the, uh, and then if we also want, what we also want to do is to sp filter it to just those six, just those six here. So let's, Let's grab a filter and just filter it to those six. So let's just start with a team and then equals a BOS. Now if we custom filter that, we can what we can do is actually just go through this. Okay, so we have our six six filtered teams so if we run this let's just see what we get okay so at the end of it we've got all of this information and then we've got the teams and then we've got a predicted amount over here so 84 for boston 82 for chicago so what have we got in here 98 for boston and 76 for chicago now I'm what I'm thinking here, and this is where I was thinking last time when I was going through this, and there's something, but I'm not sure that if we click in here, that these are actually because it said that they were too highly correlated, and I'm wondering if that was it was trying to assume that the, you know maybe this data is supposed to be that way. So um, in data investigation, we have some correlation tools. So I'm going to have a look at those and I'm just going to put them up here and put it in this way so we can select all but we want to take out win percentage and games because if it says here we're going to look at correlations and it says to exclude these two fields from the correlation so this is a correlation tool so we're going to exclude those two and then we're going to run it So what we get here is basically the correlations I can, here, um, the correlations with the winds here. So the, the higher the the number, the bigger, the better the correlation. So what I'm going to do here is we're just going to get rid of it um, because the, the first one has got the, the actual we'll go back here, got the winds where the correlation is to the wind. So we're not really obviously it's a one to one correlation with winds, but um, all these others have got a different correlation. So let's just exclude everything. 
select deselect everything and just keep that wind and the field and the field name okay so that should then give us the top oh it will give us the, the just this this column and then we just sort it by uh, the winds and we can do descending and that should give us a good correlation between the two okay and now we've got the so we just need that we just need the top 10 obviously the winds we don't need but the other so down from 2 to 11 from that so I'm actually in here we can change this so if we uh, if we just deselect everything from here and we can collect select 50 so we can go through everything and then we want the top 10 from from here okay so the top 10 are so if we run that What we get here is Boston with 97.69 and 76.2 for Chicago. So if we look here, 76 and 98. So if we just turn those into integers, what happens then? So if we stick a stick on them and we change so we've got the predicted it's, it's a float but if we put it as an integer uh, we can get rid of all of the rest now we don't need any of the rest oh let's just deselect everything and then select what we want okay if we run that what do we get Okay, so we have 98, Boston, Chicago. So we then need to work out the rest of this. So that's simply, so we want, we need a, to add a field, which is, uh, which is games. What's it called here? Doesn't have it in here. Okay, we'll call it games. And it was, um, uh, 162 and it was a well, integer will do uh, okay so we've got that okay so game is a string and we're expecting it okay so let's just get rid of the okay and run that and what I might do is just cache this now on the next run okay so what we want to do now is basically work out one minus the other uh, to work out number of losses uh, so so what was the field we wanted it was called projected losses projected wins okay so uh, we want to call it uh, Projected losses. Okay, so this is the uh, games minus the wins predicted. Okay, so we want that to be an integer. And then if we right click on this and then do cache to run in window, that should stop the whole modeling run. Okay, so we now have the team, predicted wins, number of games, predict, projected losses. Okay, so if we sort this by predicted wins, we should have it in the same order. So we'll just do descending, predicted wins, run. Okay, so we now have, we now have them in the same order let's just check with this whether they're yep they're the same amounts as well okay and we can lose the games now 
Now what we want to, to work out is so well, there's an also this game's back, so we want a projected wins and projected losses. Okay, let's just do a select and what did I call it? Projected and so this is projected wins. We can get rid of the games. Okay. So what we want is a multi row formula. A multi row formula. And what does it what's it called? It's called games back. So we want to create a new field called games back. And we want one row and we want to take no grouping by, but we want to take projected we want to take projected wins minus one minus projected wins. Okay, so that should he says we run now. Give us the. Why is that not working? Well, it's not the same, is it? So fourth. Oh, it's from the this one, isn't it? That's not okay. We've just done it from the thing. So it's from the top. So how do we how do we work out that? What we can do is we can take the first row projected wings, and we could do it a different way. So if we take so if we take a sample of now that we've got it in here and uh, we take the first one row okay and we yep we run that that gives us the 98 so we then just join that in to the data we don't need to we can filter it out here so we only want the projected wins and we will uh, I guess we can call it top win okay so we run that oh always forget to actually um, we don't that's the wrong one I'm an idiot it's the wrong type of join we want to append it because we just want to add it into all of them Okay, so now we call it uh, top win, and then we get rid of those two and run it through. Okay, so now we have that top number against each of them. Um, what do what do we want? It? What's this? It's a dash. So um, okay, so if we bring in a formula, we can then do add a column and we call it games back and it's simply uh, top wins minus oh, minus uh, the projected wins and we want that to be an integer and the first one will be zero but then we have the numbers 4491922 which is what's the same in here so then we can just uh, write another formula that converts the zero to so back wins back. Um, we can do it as an if. Um, although I'm guessing it doesn't really matter, but we can do it as an if uh, if statement. Then well, let me change the amount. Hmm. Um, if games back yeah, equals zero then I wonder if this will work I don't think it will else games back but it won't let me change it we're gonna run that I probably yeah it doesn't like it because it thinks it's now I'm trying to put a string in there which I am um I'm well I mean blank zero uh, I'm going to call that. Uh, we can just change that. We can change it, can't we? We can uh, select first. All right, so un undo that actually. 
what can I undo it? There we go, right. Okay, so if we just put a, we can change this to be a string in the meantime. So we can then put, we'll have to, if it's a string, that we expect it to be a string. Uh, so let's do that and then run bingo now we've got this dash and we can just get rid of another select at the end oh, running out of space um, and we can get rid of this top winds and then we should have if I run it the same as in here brilliant perfect there you go it's a sort of cheating because I'm using assisted modeling, but it is there to be used, and I just wanted to get use of it. Um, and I'm not actually that okay with uh, the modeling or the predictive analytics, so this has actually given me a lot of insight into how it works. There you go. Thanks very much for watching, and see you next time.